going to do today is called a long tail cast on. I've got some leftover yarn and a pair of knitting needles. I'm using a size 6 needle for this demonstration, but use whatever size needle your yarn calls for. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do the exact same cast on. Since this is a long tail cast on, we're going to need, obviously, a long tail. So we're not going to put our slip knot down here close to the end. We're going to put our slip knot back over here further down and leave a long tail. So do a slip knot however you normally would do a slip knot. This is how I do mine. Then put your needle into the loop and tighten it up. If you pull on one side and it doesn't tighten, pull on the other side and it will. But tighten it up. And you want your stitches as you're casting on to be tight enough, but not too tight. So you want your stitches to be able to slide up and down your needle, but you don't want them to fall off. So you want them just snug. So the way we're going to start this, I'm going to show you the way the knitting magazines and the books tell you how to do a long tail cast on. And then I'm going to show you an easier simplified version. So to start with, we have our thread that goes back to the ball of yarn. And then we have the side that is our long tail. So what you're going to do to start with, I put the long tail so it's closest to me, and I put the thread that goes back to the ball away from me. I hold my needle up so that both yarns are just hanging down. Take your finger and your thumb of your left hand and put it in between the two threads. Then with the rest of your fingers, grab both threads. Then if you open your finger and your thumb, you can pull back and it kind of makes what looks like a slingshot. And you'll see in some knitting magazines, they actually do call this a slingshot cast on. So let me show you that again. Put your two fingers, your thumb and your first finger in between the threads. With the rest of your fingers, grab both threads and pull back till you have what looks like a slingshot. Now let's get started. We're going to get neat. We're going to get stitches lined up on this needle. So you're going to start by going underneath the thread that's on your thumb, going over and around the thread that's on your finger, then bring the tip of your needle back through the hole on your thumb and come around. Now I have two stitches on my needle. Now I need to drop my thumb out of the loop, then my thumb needs to go back underneath come back into a slingshot. So now I have two stitches on. Let's try that again. Bring your thumb and your finger through the threads and grab all the threads with your other fingers. Pull back. You have a slingshot. Go underneath the thread on your thumb, over and around on the thread on your finger. Go straight down through the loop on your thumb and come back up around. Got my third stitch. Drop your thumb out. Bring your thumb back in between the two threads and then pull your thumb back out to tighten everything. We'll do this a couple more times. 
underneath the thread on your thumb, over and around your finger, straight back down through the hole, drop out your thumb, pick up the thread again with the thumb, and do it again. Under the thumb, around the finger, back through your thumb, drop out your thumb, thumb comes back and tightens everything. Under your thumb, around your finger, straight back through, drop out your thumb, tighten. And I'll show you how fast I go typically when I'm casting on using this method. This is my normal speed. You kind of get into a rhythm and casting on your stitches. Now let me show you a simplified version of exactly the same cast on. You can start this on the very first stitch on your slip stitch or you can start it at any time in the process. You've got your yarn that goes back to the ball and you've got your long tail that's closest to your body. This time when you grab your yarn you're going to just only grab the long tail. You're going to grab it with all your fingers and you're going to leave your thumb straight up and your knitting needle straight up. And you're going to make what's what I like to call my goal post. If you've ever watched a football game and you've seen a goal post where both sides of the goal post point up. So in a football game when you kick a field goal you want the ball to go over the bar. So we're going to do that with our thumb. We're going to go over the bar and wrap. The yarns go completely around my thumb. So you grab the yarn, thumb up, make your goal post. Your thumb is going to go over the bar and wrap. And you want that yarn to go completely around your thumb. If you do it the other way and instead bring your yarn, bring your thumb under the yarn and wrap, the yarn is not going around your thumb. It's only going halfway around your thumb. Don't want that. Make your goal post, thumb over the bar and wrap. You get that completely wrapped around your thumb. Then just like before, you're going to go underneath the stitch that's on your thumb. And just for a minute, I'm going to pinch the needle so that I don't drop the needle because I'm going to take my hand off, grab this yarn that goes back to the ball. I'm going to wrap it around behind the needle and bring it forward and the yarn is between my thumb and the needle. Then the loop that's on my thumb is going to go over the tip of the needle and then to tighten it I just pull on the long tail. You can give both sides a little tug. I'll show you that again. Make your goal post With your thumb, go over the bar, pick up the stitch, the tail that goes back to the ball, comes around behind, bring it forward between your thumb and your needle. The loop that's now on my thumb goes up and over the tip. And then to tighten everything, I just pull on the long tail. Do it again. Thumb up. Go over the bar. Go underneath the loop on my thumb. 
come around behind and bring it forward between my thumb and the needle. The loop on my thumb goes up and over. And to tighten it, I pull on the long tail. This gives you exactly the same cast on as what I showed you at the beginning. It's just a little bit easier way of holding the needle and your thread. So either way is the right way to do a long tail. Hope this technique has helped you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below in the comment section. I appreciate hearing from you and giving you getting your feedback. Again, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you feel you like this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.